Profile investors ranging from Stanley Druckenmiller, founder of the Duquesne family office, to Bill Miller of Miller Value Partners, to billionaire hedge fund manager Paul Tudor Jones have all shown support for Bitcoin this year. And that's opened the floodgates for institutional money to start pouring in. And this week, Scott Minard, the global chief investment officer at Guggenheim Partners, well, he said Bitcoin could sort of $400,000 if you thought today's gains were a lot. Can Bitcoin live up to the hype? Joining me now is Charles Cascarilla, the co-founder and CEO of Paxos, the cryptocurrency partner for PayPal. Well, let's say I just am somebody whose pension fund has now, you know, a half a percent or one percent allocation to Bitcoin. Should I should I be comfortable with that? Well, I mean, look, I think having a small allocation of Bitcoin is something almost everybody should have, um, you know, but at the same time, it's really thinking of it as a call option. The point of owning gold uh, is because you want to have a store of value. The point of owning Bitcoin is that it could become gold. It's been around now for 12 years. It's lived through a lot of turmoil, a lot of tests. It's the best example we have of digital gold. And what we've seen through COVID is that people's lives are more and more digital. They're online. They need to have a digital store of value. And just as importantly, uh, everyone has seen what's going on with the Federal Reserve balance sheet, and people are looking for ways in which they can protect their assets. And so Bitcoin is an example yeah. of one way to do that. Uh, Bill Miller made this great point. He said, there's 47 million millionaires in the world, and there's only going to be 21 million Bitcoin. So in other words, if every millionaire on the planet just wanted one, they couldn't get yeah, it. That's price. certainly one way in which the price goes up. Uh, you get a lot of people buying something that has a finite amount. But on the other hand, there is some fundamental uh, relevance to what's going on here which is that there is a need for a store of value. There's a need for an, uh, a purely digital store of value. And that's what Bitcoin represents. And so there's, of course, other um, ways that could happen. And it doesn't need to necessarily be Bitcoin. But so far, nothing has come along that's better. And so this is a real chance to own something at the early stages of a transformation. And really, you're going now from an early adopter community to the main street. And I think that's partly what PayPal enabling us for their users is, is bringing to light. There's maybe 40 or 50 million people that were involved in the Bitcoin ecosystem uh, up till now. And instead, we're going to go to something that looks yeah. like billions of people over the next year. That's a huge shift. At the end of the day, the, pub, the, the code itself is publicly open sourced. You can look at it. And so 21 million is a hard cap here. Now, um, you know, you think about institutional investors coming in. That is the real story right now. Um, it's very exciting to see uh, this asset class go from an early adopter community to mainstream. That's why everyone got involved. That's why we created Paxos, which was we want to facilitate that move from early adopter to mainstream. Uh, PayPal coming in, Revolut coming in. There's going to be a lot of other very large institutions coming in in 2021. Um, this is just the tip of the iceberg here. The beauty of Bitcoin is that it's electronic and it's self-sovereign. That means you control it and you can move it around if you want. And so in some ways, this is a great way to create freedom in a lot of countries where they don't have it, where financial freedoms are regularly taken away from people or property is confiscated. That's part of the key use mm. case here for something that's digital gold, not physical and can be confiscated right from you.